Yeah, thank you and good morning everyone. My name is Petter Kivimaki and I am the CTO of NIS, Nordic Institute for Interoperability Solutions. Uh, today uh, my topic is APIs and cross-border data exchange in e-government context and I've been working with NIS since 2018 and before that I have worked in governmental, uh, private and uh, also educational sectors. So yeah, maybe the only sector where I haven't worked as so far is, uh, well, st startups or they are not a sector, but anyways. Uh, I was graduated in software engineering, so I'm definitely a technical person, but in addition, I'm also a qualified librarian. How many of you have heard about X-Road? Well, uh, quite many. Yeah, that's, that's very nice to hear. X-Road is a data exchange layer solution that provides secure and standardized way to exchange data over the internet. X-Road was originally de developed in Estonia almost 20 years ago, but nowadays uh, it is being used uh, in, in over 10 countries all around the world. In Europe, X-Road is uh, used in Finland, and Iceland is, is currently implementing it. In South America, X-Road is uh, being used in Argentina, and there are several other countries that are implementing it or at least looking into it. In Asia, X-Road is being used by Vietnam and Japan, and there are more, more countries that are looking into it and considering it, it as an alternative as their data exchange layer solution. So X-Road is an uh, open source solution that is licensed under the MIT license, so any, anyone can use it, uh, modify it, actually do anything they want with it without free of charge. In Estonia, uh, their X-Road environment is called uh, XT, and in Finland, uh, the X-Road environment is called uh, Suomi.fi data exchange layer. So it's, it's important to understand the difference between X-Road software and then different nationwide implementations. Like you can use WordPress uh, content management system to, to host di different websites. WordPress is the software and then each website have their own name, name and brand. The same, same goes with, with X-Road. To better understand how, how X-Road works and how, how it differs from other, uh, other solutions out, out there, it is good to take a look. A uh, few, few different approaches, how data can be exchanged between a service provider and, and service consumer. If we start from the left, uh, well, traditional point-to-point -point integrations. Uh, every connection between, between a service provider and, and consumer is, is, is built uh, separately. And uh, then, of course, many times it is very easy and lightweight uh, way to get started with the integrations, then when the number of connections uh, increases, then the management comes, comes more, more challenging. And then, of course, when, when something changes, that's a whole another story. Uh, for example, when, when the certificate of a popular service provider changes, all the consumers must update their configuration. Then, uh, in the middle, we have API gateway, or actually, uh, when we are uh, talking uh, on a high level in this diagram, it could be also an ESB or some other integration solution. And then uh, on the service provider side, uh, there is a single, single uh, platform 
that is used to publish all, all the available APIs. So from, from the consumer point of view, the consumers uh, need, need to connect to the platform and not to each individual uh, backend system directly. This, of course, uh, has, has many benefits uh, over the point-to-point -point connections, uh, especially on the service provider side, because uh, uh, the, the management of, of the published endpoints, they can be managed on, on the same, same platform. But also, uh, also in this case, if, for example, the certificate of the API gateway changes, it means that all the service consumers must make, make configuration changes. Well, then uh, finally we have Xroad, uh, and uh, Xroad has a bit, bit different kind of approach. So, uh, when Xroad is used, both uh, service consumers and service providers have their own access points to the Xroad ecosystem. So, uh, service consumer and provider information systems, they do not co uh, communicate directly. Uh, they always communicate uh, with their own uh, access point only, and then uh, the connections between the organizations, uh, they are formed uh, between the access points. And yeah, of course, uh, in this model, uh, there is an additional cost uh, for both service consumer and service provider because they need their own access point. Uh, but then there are, there are also several benefits because the access point takes care of multiple things that in, in many other cases must be taken care of manually. So here's uh, what, what X-Road provides. So, um, when a new organization joins an X-Road ecosystem, uh, the identity of the organization is, is uh, verified during the onboarding process using uh, public key infrastructure, which means certificates. Uh, but yeah, then uh, the same, same goes with, with the access point too, but uh, once the organization and the access point, they have completed the onboarding process, we have verified their identity, uh, we know who they are and, and we can trust them. So based on this, X-Road creates kind of a trusted network uh, bet between the member organizations and, and their access point. Xroad also provides a standardized messaging model between the, the information, system, information systems uh, and standardized in, in this case means kind of a messaging framework, how, how services and service consumers are uh, I identified and uh, what kind of ways there are to, to transfer information between the organizations and information systems. However, it doesn't mean, uh, uh, mean semantic interoperability uh, because uh, X-Road is, is just a data exchange layer between the information systems. It doesn't uh, uh, verify or validate in any way the actual data, the message payload that is being transferred. So it can actually be, be any, any kind of data. Then uh, about security, uh, XROAD provides a secure, uh, secure layer between the access points uh, and it also provides non-repudiation and logging of all the data that is, that is sent. So all, every message is uh, digitally signed using the certificates uh, issued in, during the onboarding process and then the signatures are verified during the message processing. And every message is, uh, like I said, digitally signed but also timestamped and logged. And those logs, they, they are kind of electronic seals that can be archived and then used afterwards if, if there is, a, for example, uh, a dispute regarding uh, a transaction, uh, a data 
uh, data exchange process and it, it needs to be proven that some some action some transaction really really took place at the at a certain time between certain parties so x road x road logs can be used for that then x road also provides um, access rights management uh, so the service provider is is responsible for granting access to those consumers who are allowed to access the services well just just like it is uh, without x road so uh, x road doesn't doesn't change the responsibilities of service providers and service consumers in in that sense then x road also provides uh, address management and, and message routing like you saw in in this diagram the service consumer uh, invokes services through its own access point so uh, the consumer only needs to know the identifier of the service that it is calling and then the access point takes care of routing the message to the right network location and thanks to this approach uh, if the service providers network location should change that is uh, completely transparent to the service consumer because x road takes care of uh, managing and distributing this information to all all the access points and uh, the same goes with, with the certificates also so when the service provider certificate changes uh, no no actions are needed on the consumer side here is a bit more detailed diagram of, of X road architecture uh, like you can see uh, we have the access points on consumer and provider side uh, the component is called security server uh, in addition to the security server X road core also has other two components central server and configuration proxy uh, the role of the central components is to maintain a registry of of all the member organizations and and their security servers but it's Im important to remember that the actual data exchange it always takes place directly between the service consumer and service provider so no third parties have have access to the actual data or or the logs they always remain on on the security server that processed the message in addition uh, there are also uh, trust services included so certification authority and timestamping service provider so they are external depend dependencies they are not part of the x road software itself then few words about and different roles uh, the organization that is running the central components it's called x road governing authority and the governing authority kind of owns the x road ecosystem and it also defines the rules and policies regarding the use of of that ecosystem in Finland, uh, the X Road Governing Authority of the Suomi.fi data exchange layer is, is the Finnish Population Register Center. And in Estonia, instead, uh, the Governing Authority of uh, the Estonian XTs, the Estonian uh, Information Systems Authority. So they are uh, defining the rules regarding the use of their ecosystems and uh, in both countries uh, every organization can can join the national ecosystem so x road is not uh, just for public sector organizations but anyone can join it public sector private companies municipalities educational sector so uh, so yeah any anyone can join and then uh, we have service providers and service consumers that are the, the export members so any kind of organization and one organization can can uh, uh, have uh, uh, 
multiple roles, so there are no, no risks, uh, restrictions regarding that. The same organization can be a service consumer and a service, service provider at the same time. And uh, to be able to do that technically, uh, it's enough to have only one access point. So uh, te technically there, there is no consumer access point or provider access point. There is only one kind of access point and it can be used in, in different kind of roles. And then, like I already said, we have the trust services provider uh, that can be a commercial, commercial entity, like it is in Estonia, for example. And in Finland, uh, the trust pro services provider is the Finnish Population Register Center as well. In the be beginning, I already mentioned that X-Road can be used and is, is usually used uh, implementing um, nationwide data exchange solution. And that's the case in Finland and in Estonia and in many other countries. However, it, it could be used also, also in, a, in a big corporation to implement uh, the data exchange of, of of the corporation and it and it different and its different units, but then uh, it's also possible to connect different X, X road instances with each other, uh, and that feature is called federation, and it means that two X road environments are connected with each other uh, in a way that makes it possible for the member organizations to exchange data with members of the other ecosystem just as if they were members of the same ecosystem. Uh, so in practice it means that you saw, saw the diagrams how X-Road works and every organization has its access point they use the access point to exchange data with the organizations that are members of the same ecosystem, but they can use then the same access point to exchange data with members of, of other ecosystems. So no, no new access points or even, even configuration changes are, are needed. Uh, the connection is, is created uh, on, on the X-Road operators level between the ecosystem. But it's, it's also good to remember that uh, federation, it's, it's not only about technology. Uh, it also includes many uh, admin, administrative and legal point of views that at least from my point of view, and remember I am talking as a technical person, from my point of view, they are usually a lot more challenging than the technical questions. Uh, especially when we are talking about cross-border data exchange between public authorities. So we are talking about base registries that contain information about citizens, about all of us. So there usually must be uh, legal basis, legal agreements in place uh, so that it, it is possible to ex exchange data. Technically, it, it may take 30 minutes, half an hour to set, set up the connection, but usually the legal questions, they, they require a little bit more time. So uh, technically, uh, the connection between two ecosystems, it is first created between the central components. Uh, the X-Road operators exchange information re regarding configuration. And once that is, that is done, then the members can start to exchange data using their security servers. Then, from administrative and le legal point of view, uh, some kind of an agreement is usually needed first uh, be between the X-Road operators uh, about connecting the environments, and then 
also between the XROAD members when they exchange data. Uh, but that uh, the same thing applies all also within an ecosystem. So, for example, if a Finnish organization wants to uh, use data from the Finnish population register system, an agreement is always needed between the consumer and, and the population register center. Of course, the same applies in cross-border context too. But uh, it is usually more straightforward uh, when, when it is done within a country compared to a situation where, for example, a Finnish private company would like to uh, access the Estonian population register system. And according uh, to my experience, when it comes to this kind of administrative and contractual questions, there aren't, uh, there aren't frameworks in, in place yet. And what I mean by that is that uh, every service provider has their own, own kind of agreement and contract. And if a service consumer wants to consume data from multiple service providers, uh, the service consumer must have an agreement with all, all the providers separately and every time the, the contract is, is different, sometimes only a bit different, but sometimes there can be ma major differences. And of course that is time, time consuming and doesn't make it at least any easier to exchange data be between the organization, organizations. So uh, with the contractual framework in, in place, uh, this whole process could, could be a lot, lot easier and, and faster. Finnish and ex, uh, Estonian X-Road environments have been technically connected since February 2018. So technically it is possible to exchange data between Finnish and Estonian uh, X-Road members. There are several implementation projects ongoing and here you can see some, some of the use cases that have been documented as, as so far. However, at the moment uh, none of those projects is, is in production yet so so in the production environment there is there isn't unfortunately any cross border data moving yet but that should be just a matter of time when when that will happen and more more use cases are are in in the pipeline and and will be documented at at our website and you can see see the address there As so far, I have been talking about X-Road and, uh, and haven't said almost anything about NIS, which is the organization that I, I represent. So next few, few words about NIS and how, how we are related to, to X-Road. NIS is a joint organization founded uh, together by the government of Estonia and government of Finland. We are a non-profit organization and um, officially we, we are an Estonian association. Our mission is to develop e-government solutions to our members and we have kicked off with, with X-Road but it doesn't mean that for a long term it, it would be the only solution that, that we developed. In the future there might be other solutions, but what the solutions will be and, and when it will happen, uh, that's, that's an open question yet. At the moment we have two members, Finland and Estonia, but we are not a, a closed club, so we are definitely accepting uh, new members and we, are, we would be very happy to see other Nordic countries or, or any, any EU country as, as our member. And in addition to members, uh, there is also a more lightweight form of, uh, of collaboration which is called partnership. At the moment we have two partners 
Iceland and Faroe Islands. Like I said before, XROAD is an open source software, but it doesn't mean that uh, uh, it doesn't mean that someone wouldn't have to be responsible for developing and and maintaining it. So, uh, even if it's open source, these can be considered as as the software vendor of, of XROAD because we are responsible for all the aspects of, of the development and maintenance of XROAD. So we managed uh, the master repository, the, the source code. We have our own outsourced development teams that develop XROAD actively. We, uh, we are responsible for the documentation, requirements, management, uh, licensing, questions and and so on so basically all, all the aspects of of x road development this is our gover uh, governance model and the highest decision making body of NIS is a general meeting and our members are represented there by by two two ministries uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications of Estonia and Ministry of Finance of, of Finland. And yeah, that, that's uh, the place where, where the decisions are, are made. Uh, then we have advisory group that doesn't have real decision-making power. Uh, the, the role of advisory group is to give us uh, guidance in, in operative questions, and uh, the NIS members are uh, represented there by, by the ministries and then ex-road operators. Information Systems of Authority of Estonia and Population Register Center of Finland. And then finally we have a working group uh, that is a platform for technical collaboration. And our members are represented by, there by the XROAD operators and then we also have development team members, members there. And then, of course, we have the X-Road uh, community. Uh, so officially, the community uh, doesn't have representatives on, on any of these levels, uh, but community members can be invited to the working group meetings. And of course, uh, we, we collaborate very actively with our community through other channels. And then uh, finally, maybe the, the most uh, essential question that you might have, XROAD is open source, so why to join uh, NIS member if, if you can have the software, in any case, free of charge? That's a good question. So NIS members uh, fund uh, our operations, uh, and of course it, it means that they, they also make, make the decisions regarding the development. So basically it means that if you want to participate in the decision making of X-Road development, then uh, you should become a NIS, NIS member. Partners can also participate in the discussion, but uh, they are the members who, that make the actual decisions. As an open source software, anyone can contribute uh, to the development of XROAD and contribution may mean submitting pull requests, so, so source code level changes or also submitting enhancement requests or, or business feature requests. All the requests, they are evaluated according to the same criteria and same process, no, no matter who, who has submitted the request. The working group uh, evaluates all, all the incoming requests and those ones that are approved, they are added to the backlog and then prioritized. Sometimes uh, there might be a request that requires a significant amount of uh, resource to be, resources to be implemented or it requires some significant technical changes to the, to the software. In that case, 
uh, the decision can be taken to the advisory group. So first working group and then in some, some cases ad advisory group. And similarly, if, if the request is accepted, then it is added to the backlog and prioritized for implementation. The acceptance doesn't automatically mean that the request is implemented immediately. In some cases, yes, but usually no. The actual development is done using agile development methods. We are using Scrum and doing the development uh, using two weeks sprints. In each sprint, we uh, develop features from, from the top of the backlog. Uh, however, we do not release a new X-Road version after each sprint. As you saw, uh, the architecture diagrams, X-Road is a distributed system, and it means that all the member organizations have their own security servers, bigger organizations have, have multiple security servers, and releasing a new version every two weeks would mean that all those organizations would have to uh, upgrade their systems and it well it, it requires effort and it is not very realistic to to expect that the most of organizations would do it so we release new uh, three new versions per year and also that number of releases seems to be too, too high for some organizations because uh, they are lacking behind with, with the upgrades. And then, of course, if there are patches or security vulnerabilities or, or something like that, then, then additional releases are, are, of course, released. Here's our roadmap for this year. We have already released two, two releases. I think that uh, one of the most interesting things for this year and also when we think about the X-Road uh, version 6, which is the current version being used in Finland and in Estonia, is, is support for REST services. So uh, until April uh, 2019, X-Road supported only SOAP services, which was a big challenge for for mo most of the organizations, at, at least in Finland. But yeah, uh, since April 2019, XROAD support, supports REST services, and the support has been implemented so that the producing and consuming uh, REST services, existing REST services, can be done so that no changes are required to, to the services. So if you have a, have a REST service, then you can publish it via, via X-Road. No changes are required. Uh, that's not the case with, with SOAP services. So even, if we, even when you have an ex existing SOAP service and you want to publish it via X-Road, you need to do some changes. Because, uh, like I mentioned before, X-Road takes care of message routing based on uh, service identifiers. In the SOAP implementation, those identifiers are in, included in, in SOAP headers, so your SOAP service must uh, provide those headers. In, in the REST implementation, instead, uh, those identifiers, they are included on, on the consumer side in, in the URL and HTTP headers. And on the service side, uh, well, they, they can be ignored because the security server takes care of all, all the required actions, which is not, not the case in the SOAP implementation. So. REST is supported and more REST is coming later, later this year. So the current version supports consuming and producing REST services, but then uh, this, this autumn we are also going to provide support for providing uh, service descriptions using uh, Open API tree specification and bring in some, some more fine-grained authorization regarding REST services. Other big changes this year, uh, new API-based UI, it should be included in, in the autumn release. And then what we have already implemented is 
st more streamlined onboarding process and then uh, standalone security server. So if you are not familiar with X-Road yet, you would like to uh, test it, take a look how it is. Uh, on Docker Hub under Nice account, there is standalone security server available as a Docker container. Uh, you can get it up and running uh, by issuing one command and then it is immediately uh, operational for testing purposes. So very easy way to, way to test, test the platform. And then we have some bigger plans for the next years. In the beginning of this year, we have already started design and planning of, of the next version of X-Road, X-Road 7. And the implementation should start in the beginning of next year. And the aim is to get the first minimum lovable product or a, a pilot version during the next year. And the first production version in, in 2021. And this year, yeah, we are uh, doing some background research and, and planning regarding the new, new version. Uh, we, are, uh, we are organizing several workshops during the year and, and anyone can participate in them. So, so if, if you are interested in X-Road and participating in, in the planning of, of X-Road 7, you are all, all welcome to participate the workshops. You can find more, more information about the upcoming events at our website. Yeah, Th thank you. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Petteri. Any questions for him?